you really need to have a low time preference and be willing to endure some pain in the present and push out uh, that future feeling that you'll start to have of relief and being able to breathe again, having less headache days. And all right, guys, this is going to be update number nine for our Marpy series. And I'm going to be going over some of the notes I took at my last appointment with Dr. Evans. So at the time of my last appointment, I was on turn 18 and I had some notes that I brought to her concerns or questions that I wanted to bring up. First was my cheekbones. I was watching a old interview that Dr. Evans did with jaw hacks and they were mentioning asymmetries and the link of the pterygo maxillary suture. Forgive me, I'm not too technical on the terms, but it was basically a suture um, behind your skull here, or kind of further in, Um, and during the expansion, basically, when uh, one side can actually break before the other and cause a potential asymmetry. Um, I had a pre-existing one, so... You can see a little bit on this cheekbone or zygoma or zygomatic. It's popping out. Uh, That's due to the turn. So your face is being expanded with treatment, with a treatment like Marpy. And you can see the effect it has on the mid face. So this isn't just an orthodontic appliance. It's really, well, that's what it is, but it has an effect on everything going on on the skeletal structure level. And I know it's a big thing, Marpy asymmetry, people freak out. With an experienced provider like Dr. Evans, the trust is fully there. I mean, it can be a little bit concerning to see um, stuff happening and noticing it, but putting your trust in someone who's that experienced and bringing these concerns up to her um, just straight up, She reassured me that during this phase right now, basically my facial bones are remodeling. So as I'm turning the expander, these bones are getting pushed out and shifting forward. So the maxilla doesn't only expand out with the expander. There is also some forward motion that is involved, which is in theory what you want. And some um, providers actually have you wear a face mask, a face mask that would actually hook onto these hooks right there and pull the maxilla forward while you're going through treatment. And I believe you wear that at night and probably sometime, you know, in the morning and um, before you fall asleep. And I believe it's for a total of 12 hours um, on average, but depending. So the bottom line with the asymmetry is it can happen while you're turning. And I think it's very rare to get a perfect expansion. So when these asymmetries happen, it's important for your provider to acknowledge them and have a plan in place. So in my case, um, we're keeping in mind that everything's kind of remodeling. I already had, and I'll share on the screen here, Dr. Evers pointed out, And Dr. Evans pointed out, this is from my CBCT. You can see the slight asymmetry on this side. Um, That was pre-existing. So we're already already working with uh, that in mind. Um, But I'm not only doing this for aesthetics. Maybe that's a side benefit of this. But uh, the main reason is for the airway, expanding the airway and all the benefits that that has down the chain, the headaches, the acid reflex. Um, if you want more of a deep dive of all those symptoms and why I got Marpy, you can check out the video up there on, on why I got Marpy and those symptoms that the Marpy is supposed to help. So we see the change going on with the mid face, and I've been getting comments about having a plan for the lower. So talking to Dr. Evans, there is no plan of um, any type of mandible expansion apart from dental expansion. So I do have a bottom uh, wire permanent retainer that's in from my past orthodontics that we will be removing. And in the round of orthodontics that I go through after the expansion will help bring uh, the lower arch, making it wider. Because I believe in most cases, um, people can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but 
a lot of times it is just the maxilla. Well, I shouldn't say that because when the maxilla is underdeveloped, it often leads to an underdeveloped mandible. But I believe um, in my case specifically, my mandible isn't severely underdeveloped enough to have to do a procedure where you would actually expand the lower mandible. And there is a whole um, list of further complications that can happen from that because at that point you are um, really messing with your TMJ joints. I mean, you are messing with them while you're doing MARPI, um, but even more once you incorporate expansion in your mandible. So that's the plan for the lower. I'm leaving it up to Dr. Evans to come through after the, the maxilla is expanded and kind of bring forward uh, I believe we're going to be using some elastics, as I mentioned in a previous update, um, and do something unique she has planned to help bring uh, the mandible forward to match the maxilla. So I brought up to Dr. Evans that I'm already experiencing a lot of the, or I should say some of the nasal breathing benefits, um, as well as the sinus draining that I've been experiencing. So I've definitely been blowing my nose more and it feels like clearing a lot more of what's um, previously been trapped in my nose, I guess, and there's a lot less of swallowing mucus and more of uh, blowing, blowing my nose and getting all that out my system, which is another huge benefit of Marpy. I did bring up how many nosebleeds I was getting. Um, just to put it out there, I have always had a problem with nosebleeds, especially when the seasons change. Ever since probably as early as fifth or sixth grade, I remember um, walking out of class because just started gushing blood in the middle of math or whatever. And I mean, not gonna lie, kind of nice being able to step out of class for a minute, but it's not fun when you're staining um, your clothes, and I feel like the Marpy has opened up my airway, but also more air into my system, further drawing out my nose and kind of exacerbating my pre-existing nosebleeds, because in the paper Dr. Evans gives you when you uh, get your Marpy, and they do mention slight nose bleeding that can occur, but with me having pre uh, pre-existing nosebleeds, uh, that way exacerbated um, and is something I honestly wasn't expecting. During my last appointment, I also got a chance to show Dr. Evans some pictures um, of me through my childhood. So she was actually able to see the progression of my jaw deficiencies, which was really cool in drawing that into the course that I got to sit through and all about um, the course she does on childhood expansion. And that's what really, as I said, opened my eyes and how important this stuff is and bringing attention to this whole uh, topic, not just for adult expansion, but also how important it is for children because anyone who's getting expanded as adult was a recessed child and um, ideally would have you would have been caught and diagnosed and action would have been taken. A lot of what Dr. Evans practices currently is expanding children and giving them that benefit and having them grow to their full potential. So at the time of the appointment, like I said, I was about 18 turns in. She had me turning every other day and I'm going to be continuing that, but I was advised only to turn 10 more times. Now um, that it's a few days past that, it is eight more times that I will be turning. We are still waiting to do the CBCT to, <coughs> to get that full picture, but I'm still looking forward to hopefully bring that to you guys. Like I brought my previous CBCT and giving you guys a more of a behind the scenes look of what's going on, how it's gonna be really cool to see how I've expanded, how much I've expanded, Hopefully I'll be able to get Dr. Evans to draw on the CBCT pictures um, on the software. You're actually able to measure um, the intermolar width and she can measure presumably my expansion and how much I've gotten in the front and the back and be able to answer those questions that I have. And I'm sure you guys have uh, anyone thinking about going through this treatment. I plan on keeping this content coming. Um, I have a full-time job and I'm in graduate school right now. so. And I'm going through the expansion process, so there's a lot going on. Um, trying to bring you guys a couple updates a week and probably sprinkle in some videos that just cover the Marpy topic in general. I have a video that I want to make about um, a to-go bag for the Marpy and things that I find helpful. 
Um, I know I mentioned that life hack of having the air tag on the Marby keys, which is pretty obvious now in hindsight. Um, but basically stuff like that, that other people who are thinking about going through this treatment or who are actually actively going through the treatment can come to and use it as a resource to learn things that they maybe didn't know and to find useful tips that will actually benefit your life during the expansion process because it's not always fun, it's painful, it can be annoying. You really need to have a low time preference and be willing to endure some pain in the present and push out uh, that future feeling that you'll start to have of relief and being able to breathe again, having less headache days and all the other things I mentioned in the past, just having an overall huge quality of life improvement. It's going to hurt now. I promise you, once you're expanded, it's going to be 10 times better. Hope you guys are enjoying all this content. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions, concerns, or ideas for future videos slash topics you want me to cover. I read all the comments and I appreciate everyone's support. So smash the subscribe button and check out these other videos I have about my Marpee.